Hey, James here. Today, let's talk about mindfulness. And uh, yes, that really is a gray sky behind me in beautiful sunny Pasadena. So this is a topic that I think um, that all of us maybe don't think about but I think we experience, if you're out on the trail for any period of time and you do a lot of walking, especially solo, uh, you will end up at some point sort of falling into this space of mindful walking. Um, but you probably don't think about it consciously, unless you do. So let's get into exactly what that means. I think my favorite definition of mindfulness is the moment-to-moment -moment awareness of one's present experience without judgment. There are two keys to that phrase that I like. First, it points to your present experience, what's going on right now. In Buddhism, and most of what I'm going to talk about sort of comes from the Buddhist frame uh, of perspective, um, mostly because that's where a lot of this, uh, at least what we in the Western world understand as mindfulness kind of comes from that tradition. In Buddhism, there's the idea that Past is pain, future is worry. Presence is the only place that you can find true peace. What that means is that for most of us, when we're thinking about the past, especially when we're sort of going over events over and over again, it's, uh, it brings us pain. We're thinking about the things we should have said, the things we should have done, uh, things that we uh, shouldn't have done, <laughs> things we shouldn't have said, uh, all of that kind of stuff. Um, generally, uh, for most of us, it's thinking those kinds of thoughts. And in the future, it's all about worry and fear. What's going to happen to me? Uh, what can happen to me? Um, what's going to happen to my friends? What's, uh, you know, how am I going to make it through this month? All that kind of stuff. Um, it's only in the present moment where you can recognize that you're okay. I'm breathing. I'm warm. I'm indoors. I'm sitting in this glorious garden space in Pasadena. Usually when we can bring ourselves to the present moment, we recognize that everything's okay. Whatever's in the past is done, can't affect us anymore. Unless of course it can. Uh, if you're a convict on the run, maybe your past is catching up with you. But even then, in the present moment, you're okay. Uh, and the future hasn't happened yet. Uh, all kinds of things can happen between now and then. No reason to worry about the future, which is different from planning the future. That's a very different thing. Maybe at some point we'll get into discussing the differentiation between those two. But for now, let's just remember the definition of mindfulness is your present awareness, moment to moment, of what's going on with you right now, and then the second part of that that I like is without judgment. You're not looking at it and saying, well, I wish the sky was bluer, I wish the grass was greener, I wish the money pile was larger. So mindful meditation is all the rage in the US right now. Uh, it pretty much um, has become like the generic, the default um, method or mode of meditation for most of us in the US. Uh, there's all different kinds of meditation, um, but the general, it's become sort of a, just a, uh, almost the Kleenex or Xerox of meditation where um, it's the idea of just bringing yourself to the present moment. So it may not be surprising to note that there's been a lot of scientific uh, research on the subject of mindfulness because we in the West, we love to get empirical data on things. So, so here's a list of uh, some of the most common empirically supported benefits of mindful meditation. Reduced rumination. Basically what rumination means is you're going over thoughts over and over and over and over again, usually to no end. It's just sort of a repetitive cycle that keeps your mind busy and puts you in past worry mode. Boost to working memory, which is basically the same thing as saying short-term memory. Increase focus, less emotional reactivity, which is another way to say that you're not as easily triggered. More cognitive flexibility, 
Relationship satisfaction. Enhanced self-insight, morality, intuition, fear modulation, which basically means less fearful, or you're not extremely high or low in that fear space. You can kind of regulate it, feel the fear without getting caught up in the fear. And as it turns out, all or most of these functions are related to the brain's middle prefrontal lobe. I got to tell you, when I started looking this stuff up, um, I found that the amount of research on this and clinical data is staggering. There's a reason that a lot of people say that mindfulness meditation is one of the best ways to upgrade your life. It's the ultimate life hack. So a lot of us are aware of mindfulness and mindful meditation, um, but what do you know about walking meditation? That's a thing. Now, just about any activity can be done mindfully or in a meditative space. Walking meditation is one of the most common practices of Buddhists. It's used uh, in a number of ways. One of the most common ways is to break up sitting meditation. So if you're meditating all day as a monk and you're doing a lot of sitting meditation, in order to break that up and get a little exercise in at the same time, they would get, they get up and go do a walking meditation. So what's that all about? This walking meditation can take many forms. Uh, there are those who uh, will do it very slowly where like each step is a breath. Um, and again, you're in this meditative space where you're aware of your body, you're aware of your environment, you're aware of uh, how you're moving through that space and it's all bringing it back to the present moment. Now, this is one of the things that fascinates me most about this, uh, about uh, hiking in that uh, if you're walking all day long, we kind of fall into this space sometimes. But um, Buddha says there's many benefits to this. And here's five that he listed. Who knew that Buddha was in the top five list? But here we are. One is fit for long journeys. Basically increases your stamina. One is fit for striving. More energy. One has less disease. So obviously, increases your immune system. That which is eaten, drunk, chewed, tasted, goes through proper digestion. Keeps you regular, y'all. And number five, the composure attained by walking up and down is long lasting. Basically, I figure this just means you're a badass. So here's my favorite thing about walking meditation is that it brings your mind, your body, and your environment all together. It's the opposite of a lot of seated meditations where you're withdrawn inside and you're kind of in this mind, sometimes mind-body space. Walking meditation puts you right out in the environment and if you're being present in your moment-to-moment -moment experience, that includes all of your senses. What you hear, what you taste in the air, what you smell, what you see, all of that becomes part of your experience and you're noticing it moment to moment without judgment. Without judgment also sort of includes that, oh my God, that's beautiful kind of thing. But um, I usually forgive that because my God, we live in a beautiful world, right? What it does do is it engages all of your senses, brings them all together. And if you can do that and sort of in this mindful space, uh, where you're recognizing it as you're moving through it, uh, it also has, well, all of those benefits listed, but um, a couple of other side effect benefits. One of them being, it increases your situational awareness. Now, for those of you who've been in the military uh, or in law enforcement or anything like that, um, you kind of understand uh, what situational awareness means. It kind of means basically what we were just talking about. You're aware of your surroundings and yourself within those surroundings. We understand this maybe through the Bourne Identity movies uh, where he's aware of all the exits and who's packing and who's not. And basically all that kind of stuff. You're aware of your surroundings, your, whole, your space that you're inhabiting and yourself within it and how you relate to all of those things. So another side benefit to this is that because you're really focused on the moment-to-moment, -moment, your present experience, 
you tend to remember the experience more. A lot of people talk about with, you know, now that we have camera phones and things like that, that we tend to experience our world through these, through our lens and, you know, are we capturing it right? How are we going to post it? Who's going to see this? All of those other thoughts that start going through your head um, take you away, can take you away from the experience. So the idea of walking meditation um, where you're uh, hyper-focused on your present experience tends to lock it into your brain better. You're taking mental pictures that are unencumbered by other thoughts. They won't get jumbled in other thoughts. Now, personally, I've done a lot of walking in a lot of different situations uh, from, uh, you know, my military experience where we, you would literally kind of go from a mindful <laughs> meditation to a actual walking while you're asleep. In fact, I may, do, uh, I may do a video just on that, on falling asleep while you're walking. Um, I don't know that it happens, has happened to anybody on the trail, any of you uh, long distance through hikers or anybody who's uh, walked basically through exhaustion uh, might have experienced that. If you have, uh, leave a comment down below. I'd love to uh, hear your story about that. But um, certainly I've had, and my buddies have had many times where you're just walking along and you find yourself waking up after, uh, you know, like a five to 10 second cat nap. And you, you find yourself like walking a hundred yards and not really remembering doing those steps. Literally falling asleep on your feet. Um, and that's a real thing, but this is not that. This is uh, staying aware, staying focused. If you can do that without judgment and just let it sort of go past and take it in, then you're really in that mindful space that classic mindful space. So I would love to hear any of your experiences about this out on the trail. Um, anybody who's felt like a, they've sort of been in a meditation as they're walking along. I know I have, um, but I'd love to hear from you if you've had, if you've experienced this and what it was like for you. Also, I haven't made a pitch for this yet, but um, I'd love for you to subscribe if you want to follow along with me. I will be doing these uh, at least once a week, maybe twice a week up until I start the trail on March 27th, and then uh, I'll be recording daily what's going on. I'm still not sure if, uh, how often I'll be posting. Probably still at least once a week, maybe more often, probably throwing some lives, but basically if you want to follow along uh, with this uh, ex old X-Rangers experience along the way on the trail, uh, I'd love to have you. So um, click that subscribe button, uh, hit the bell if you want to be notified as soon as my videos hit the airwaves, and um, come along. I'd love to have you. Love to have you along with me.